Hello, friends. Welcome to the Faith Culture Podcast. My name is Shina Akonde from Lagos, Nigeria. It's so good to be on the show with you again today. And I have a very, you know, interesting topic um, that we will be discussing about. Uh, it's on marriage and it's about, um, you know, um, how you can navigate, you know, the first um, few years of, of marriage. You know, most people say the first year of every marriage is the hardest, but is that the truth? I mean, and how can you, maybe you're single, you're looking um, towards marriage, how can you navigate, you know, those few, um, first year of marriage, your first year of marriage or the first few years of, uh, of being married? Uh, and today on the show, I have with me Emmanuel uh, Olujobi and um, Hebu Oluwa. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And these are, uh, uh, you know, married folks, although not uh, married to each other, <laughs> you know, but uh, it's so good to have you both, uh, you know, come on the show today to share your experience, you know, on how you have been able to uh, navigate, uh, you know, the first few years of um, of your marriage. Uh, Bebun, let's meet you. Can you just uh, tell us um, how, how long have you been married? Okay, I've been married for um, almost five, less four years, right? So we got married in March 2018. So four years now. Wow. Uh, Imano, how about you? How long have you been married? So I've been married for three years, four months. Um, yeah, so that was February 2019. Wow, great stuff. Great stuff. Okay, um, so uh, you, you married, you, you, can you tell us your wife's name and um, how, how did you meet her? So my wife is Deborah, um, CEO of Fidesz Ways, um, an amazing lady. Well, everybody says that about their spouse. Um, I met my wife in a very interesting way, right? Um, she runs a foundation, the Doobie Teenage Foundation, um, by the way, we are members of the same church, um, I mean, but not the same location, right? So I met her through one of our events. Um, as a matter of fact, I volunteered for our event in 2018. Wow. Um, then I was still at the bank. I was with Sterling Bank. I tried to bring someone. Um, I felt to be of value to the event. Tried to put a few things together to volunteer, not even... Um, at a supporting or organizing level, I was a volunteer. And so I remember after the event, we had a post event analysis and um, that was my first time having to sit down with her. So um, I'll say I met her from volunteering at an event. Wow, great stuff, great stuff. And from there, you took it uh, to another level. So, <laughs> so interestingly, um, then I was, thinking to marry someone else. So my mind, my thoughts, my affections were everywhere outside the borough, right? So um, it took a couple of years, not too long, uh, I mean, just within a year anyway, to take a decision, right? Stuff happened with the other um, fellow and then uh, my eyes got opened, I'll, I'll say that, right? So at the time I was volunteering for her um, or at her events, had no intentions or just um just one other lady i was trying to help i mean a number of them within my church then um, i thought i could help them or help guys also right so yeah okay uh, thanks a lot for uh, sharing that with us all right <laughs> um i'm still gonna come back to you but uh, yeah you, you tell us um you know you've been married uh, four years plus or do you say five really Four plus, not five. Four plus, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, so you want to tell us how you met your husband or how your husband met you? <laughs> um, so my husband's name is um, Tokumbo. And we met several years ago. So we met right after I finished my work. Okay. Um, and he was already in uni at the time, I think. We met at church. So, uh, um, yeah, he, we were in teens church at the time. And he just, he sat next to me basically. And they said, I think at the end of the service, they said the older teenagers should, you know, take the numbers of the younger teenagers and just keep them <laughs> in line. And apparently he wanted to keep me in line. So, I mean, that was how we met. 
and had I'd seen him, you know, in the church before then. So it was a small family church, right? So I, I sort of, I had never spoken to him before that day. Um, we, after a while, we dated, I think by the time I was in um, college, and uh, we broke up for like a year, or a, almost two years. And then we got back together in 20, I think 16, and we got married in 2018. So that's the short version of the story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. So should I say from mentee to wifey? He never mentored anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. And I, I mean, to Emmanuel as well, you know, it's so amazing that, you know, you, you, I mean, even when you were volunteering for your wife, Back then, as I mean, someone you just um, probably admired what they do. You had no intentions to even, you know, get married to her. But I mean, that, that was that, that was incredible. Okay, um, you know, I'm going to ask you, um, Ebu, how would you describe your marriage? I mean, four years plus. Well, I would I would say we're two imperfect people, um, you know, working towards a union with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because I, I, we still had this conversation yesterday about how. You know, um, we're all imperfect and we're just working towards our perfection, right? And, um, but you know, you have to at least be, you need to know yourself <laughs> before you get into marriage and not be broken, right? And then come into union with somebody else. So, what I would definitely say is, you know, we're just two imperfect people doing our best, you know, every day deciding to, you know, to be there for each other, be there for our child, right? And, you know, at the most important thing is serve God through our marriage and, you know, just make sure that the father is pleased. <laughs> That's what I would say. Okay. Oh, great stuff. I mean, some persons will tell you, you know, marriage is for perfect people. I mean, you have to be perfect. Uh, but if I'm going to ask you, do, do you believe, um, in the, I mean, do you believe in that concept that, you know, you have to be like a perfect single person before you go into marriage or something. I don't think you you I don't I don't even think there is such a phenomenon as a perfect person, right? So what about being whole? I, I, I'm about looking being for whole. but it's about being whole, right? And wholeness is not perfection, right? So wholeness is an understanding of who you are as a person and then who you are in Christ, right? That that understanding that this is this is who Evolua is. And as a child of God, this is also who she is in the kingdom, right? I'm whole, right? I'm not, I don't need somebody to sort of like, um, I don't need him to be my Jehovah Jireh because I have my Jehovah Jireh. Do you understand? So that's sort of, that's the wholeness that I believe is necessary, not perfection. So um, yes, definitely be whole, you know, don't come with baggage. Don't come with past hurt expecting this person to fix or heal those hurts, right? Only, only Jesus can heal your pains, right? So that sort of thing, you, you, you drop whatever it is. And that's why it says, you know, you leave father and mother and cleave, right? You're not supposed to come with anything. The only, you know, you're not supposed to come with anything into that marriage. So you're supposed to come, I mean, with your whole self yeah. and your absolute best. That's, that's, that's what I, I would say. Well, thank you. Interesting um, perspective. Uh, Imano, yeah. So, um, how, how would you describe your your marriage? And uh, and I'm going to ask you this: uh, your expectations prior to marriage, and what you currently experience now. Uh, I mean, has it changed? Uh, yeah. Let's hear from you. Okay. So, if this was Twitter, right, I would have just um, retweeted Ebon's response to um, <laughs> yeah, how, right. yeah, indeed, because um, it is very true to say marriage is coming together of two imperfect people um and maybe i'll just add that um what keeps a marriage together and in this uh, case right specific to mine is understanding i hear a lot of people say marriage is built on love and sustained by understanding and i think that's very true it may sound like a cliche statement but um yes love brings you together you have affection you want to spend the rest of your life with this person but you need to be intentional about um, making things work. I'll give you a very quick example. Both of you have different backgrounds. Say you got married at 25, 23, whatever the age. 
you've built experiences, you've built understanding, you've come from a family background, um, you know, education, every other thing that has made you up, up to that point in time, right? So you have to live with somebody else who you've um, at the very best maybe been friends with. So um, my marriage in this case has one of been very intentional about what we want to, um, how we want to run our lives. Um, yes, to imperfect people who are very deliberate about making things work. Yeah. And just to sort of like, you know, interestingly, um, some of the things we come into marriage, we don't even know. Right. So the first hurdle that I had to cross in my marriage, as ridiculous as, as it sounds, is packing, you know, putting my clothes in the wardrobe. I, I was comfortable living out of a box because I had from secondary school, I was in boarding house, right? Uni, I just wasn't living with my parents. So I le lived with them for maybe like a one year period before I got married, right? So I didn't understand the concept of unloading my things into a wardrobe. I was comfortable living out of a box. And he was watching me for a while. And I was like, Madam, you have to put your clothes in the wardrobe. And I'm like, it's fine. But you know, that's just people are, the, and I didn't even know that that was a thing. And like, you know, Emmanuel said, understanding, because obviously he watched me for a while and then he came to a place where, okay, let's talk about this. And he spoke about it, you know, in love, as opposed to, don't you want to be in this marriage and all that? So yeah, understanding is absolutely, absolutely critical. Yes. Wow. So, um, I mean, that means um, love is not enough. Understanding um, sort of makes a difference in marriage. Am I correct? Absolutely. Um, yes, because, you know, and I'm going to answer a question about expectations versus um, reality, right? So yeah. one of the things we miss or people miss, not we, right, is the fact that um, you expect one utopian um, family where everything is perfect. You've seen this lady. She's been in her best state every time you've met her. You've seen this young man just before marriage. You've seen him in his best state, right? So you expect everything to be perfect, and a lot of times people go into marriage with that expectation. Like um, every time you meet this guy in church, while mm -hmm. cutting, wherever it is, you've had the best of him, right? So if you expect um, loving alone to run your marriage, right? There are times where you may not feel like you love this person, right? I mean, momentarily, even after you got married, right? Um, but understanding keeps you together. So love is a very powerful um, factor, right, that sustains a home, but it's not everything. So speaking to expectations versus what um, my reality is, I'll say this with every sense of sincerity. My expectations, um, I'm just three years old plus. Um, I can't say I've stayed too long in this, but I'll say it's been better than my, um, my reality, as in better of my expectations. And I'm saying this not on the basis of um say those um very fancy vanilla kind of uh, paintings you expect in marriage but in yeah. terms of the core um expectations from marriage support understanding um being critical i mean when she has to say yes or a no to you right i mean you have a wife who is truthful enough to say this um times where you have to take a decision and she's there to support you or to caution you. So um, if you look, leave out some of the extras, which, I mean, sustains home, so I mean, it makes it fun because um, someone like me, is, I'm a very analytical person. I'm not excessively social. So um, you need, when I come home, I try to balance up that part of me. So I would say um, my reality has been interesting. My reality has been beautiful. My expectations sometimes, right, uh, may not be exactly the way it's played out, but some of those expectations may not have been quality. For example, you expect that you would have every weekend to yourself as couples. You should be able to go on vacation every six months. So those kind of expectations in marriage are not sustainable, may not be sustainable. So um, in basing my reality, right, I would think... Um, so far, so good. Exceeded expectations. Wow, interesting. <laughs> I mean, maybe oh, some of these days we'll probably um, have you again to talk about the tips for 
for for for, for marine rights. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, well, I mean, beautiful stuff. Uh, but then uh, I'm going to ask you um, this, Mano. Do you think it's normal for couples to fight? I mean, in quotes, uh, you know, in the first um, few years of marriage. Have you ever had a fight with your wife? In quotes, I don't mean books. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know, there's this quote by I think it was Chino Achibi that said, um, or I mean, this African proverb, but it's different versions that says, if two family members go in for a meeting, and after hours of the meeting they come out both smiling, right? You've not told yourself the truth. So one of the things I learned very early in my marriage was to face reality. Now, reality to me would be sometimes we have to fight in quotes, right? Not fight as exchange blow or get physical. We've never ever had to do that, right? But we have to disagree to agree very many times. We had so many of such during a courtship period. And the beautiful thing is that it helped us understand each other. So uh, just like it was uh, mentioned about, um, you know, all the while before she got married, she could just easily leave out of the box. And there's no problem with that, right? But um, she had to adjust to, um, you know, just to accommodate her husband's expectations. So myself also, I am somebody who, I have ways I expect things to be done, right? And in many cases, these are the right ways for things to be done. But in life, there are no one way for things to be done. So you need to come to a middle ground. And that is what happens every time there is a misunderstanding, every time um, an expectation is not met, you've asked something to, um, or you expect for something to be done, it's not done the exact way you expect for it to be done. So yes, um, that happens. Now speaking to the first few years of your marriage, that would happen a lot, no matter the family, um, Christian family, non-Christian family. And that's because you're getting to understand the next person. And more importantly, you're getting to understand yourself in a situation where you are living with the second person. So even if you've stayed in a boarding house, you've had a roommate. So for example, I've had a roommate who was a guy. Um, guys to guys now, I mean, you may not cook, you just come home, you know how to sort yourself. Um, you may keep his clothes anywhere, you know how to sort yourself. But now you're living with a lady. So imagine, for example, the first few weeks of my getting married. I never lived with a lady before, right? I needed to get to understand living with a lady, the, um, the nuances, expectations, temperaments, our body, it's the same. So um, there will be lots of misunderstandings. There will be lots of frictions. But the beautiful thing is that when you, your partner understands that this is not from a place of um, hate, easily reconcile and you move on. Wow. <laughs> Deep stuff. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, uh, Emmanuel. Ebon, yeah, what would, you, what would you have to say about uh, about that? So, I mean, I think I think you fight, you know, fight. And when we talk about fight, I was talking about, like, you know, um, misunderstandings and, you know, um, discussions, let's call it that, right? Um, and you have that for as long as you're married. Um, I always thought it was early marriage, but I'm watching my parents and I'm saying, okay, you know, this might be, they might be having a conversation that is not very um, friendly, right? But, you know, you... I think it's really about just understanding that at the end of the day, you're two different people. Your your history is different. Your background is different. Your upbringing is different. The things you were exposed to, you know, are different. So um, the way you see things will be different. The first thing that my husband and I couldn't agree on was, was money. And he's a saver. He absolutely saves. I was a spender, <laughs> right? So... Um, <laughs> Did I'm, say an was? Only, I'm an only girl. I'm I'm improving. You see, we're not perfect. We're mm -hmm. growing in perfection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I I sort of had the a, a relentless ATM, you know, but it was it was um and we, we learned as we went along. It's not perfect. We still have conversations where, you know, when it comes to finance, it's still, it's still a tough conversation in some instan instances because, like I said, I am working towards where he is. He's in a good position, right? So he would sometimes expect you should have moved past this stage at this time and things like that, right? But it's really understanding. We come back to understanding. And, you know, something about understanding is, yeah, there's understanding your partner. 
Then there's also understanding, you know, marriage as an institution. And then there's also understanding, you know, the fact that you are accountable to the third party in this marriage, which is, the, you know, the three court, the three strand court, right? There's a third party in this marriage that you're also accountable to, right? So that general understanding will help you weather those storms. The fights are absolutely, I don't think you can actually avoid them. Then you have like, you know, and at the early stage of your marriage, you introduce certain things. So you first get married, you adjust to both of you living together. And when you think you are sort of, you know, um, you're, you're stable, you understand the nuances of your, <laughs> your cohabitation, right? Then she gets pregnant and it can be so many things for so many people. And then the child actually comes. There's that whole mix. You know, there's so much that happens in those early phases of marriage that, you know, by their nature, you know, would cause friction in your marriage. So definitely, I don't think you can escape it. And like he said, if you are not fighting in your marriage, <laughs> you are not telling yourselves the truth. And it would, it would, it would definitely come back to bite you <laughs> at some point. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, okay. I mean, I, I mean, I was tempted to ask that. So if we have somebody who probably has been living peacefully, no fight at all, no quarrels, no uh, no misunderstanding. Um, so that means they're probably not telling themselves the truth. They should just watch out for it. I mean, is they that, need to is check that it. Accurate? I would say they need to check it. Because okay. I can't, even I find, even my siblings that we grew up in the same house, under the same conditions, <laughs> with the same exposure, we have misunderstandings, right? So how would you come with this person that you don't know everything about right and say you know you don't you guys will not have any sort of you know disagreements or anything like that you know someone isn't telling the other person the truth okay interesting thanks a lot like um, comments around that right okay. and yeah. yes just to portray what everyone has said um for the benefit of those who will be listening now, let's think of, I, I know we'll be having mixed audience watching these Christians and non, non-Christians, but think of a Jesus Christ, for example. Um, for us Christians, Jesus is our perfect example. But it's still hard to, at some point, he and Peter were not aligned, right? Um, he had to caution his disciples at some times where they were vying for positions. So if you have two couples who have stayed weeks together, months and there are no hard and fast rules i mean we're not going to marry the expecting that my first few days i should fight with my wife and i think i'm passing the uh, marriage test no or if you stay for a while together and you've not had a bit of misunderstanding right it shows that um i mean there are cases where some people will box up emotion for a long time and after a while they're either depressed or they blow up right so um, we're not saying that you should expect going to marriage to fight, but you have to tell yourself the truth. There are times where you disagree, and like everyone said, um, one way to view marriage is let's even take away the faith part of marriage. There are non Christians who live together for 60 years, for 70 years, right? So if their marriages can work from the principle of understanding, now, Think of what happens where you now have the Holy Spirit to guide you. And um, I will mention something I, I want to quickly flash on also. I, I think that um, God ordained this session, I mean, me meeting everyone, because in my marriage, and I'm very proud to say this, we always tell ourselves this, it's been over three days, we still tell ourselves this, that it is not about us. It is about the fact that we are fulfilling, fulfilling the purpose. So, the only person in between us is the Holy Spirit, like people mentioned. Now, this is important for us because whenever we have to take a decision or we have to reconcile or we have to, you know, whatever it is, good, bad, ugly, we remember that it's not about Emmanuel and Deborah. It is about the fact that we are fulfilling the purpose within um, kingdom ministry, right? Yes, we, we have our own lives to live, in quotes, but we are fulfilling the purpose, right? So, if you go into marriage understanding that um, it's not just all fun, it's not just you wanting to live a good and happy life ever after, 
it is about you playing a part, right, in the grand picture that God has um, purpose for kingdom homes. You would easily align, I mean, even if you had reasons to fight, right? And um, always make it very clear to your partner that there is the Holy Spirit binding you both together. So um, you would always go to the Holy Spirit to resolve things. And just to emphasize on things Abel had mentioned. Hmm. I mean, we can actually, um, you know, emphasize the fact that, um, you know, the Holy Spirit plays a major role, you know, in, in, uh, you know, in creating some sort of home that uh, that is peaceful, you know, that is, uh, you know, that is God, uh, that is purposeful, right? You know, we actually need the Holy Spirit. And I mean, and I, and I, and I like the fact that you also emphasize that, you know, in your response. Um, now, there's this thing I've always heard about bias rumors. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. Anyone? What do you call it? Bias rumors. Bias rumors. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, Ebu, uh, uh, at any point, you know, in this four, in this um, four plus years of marriage, uh, have you ever uh, did you ever come to a point where you had buyer's remorse, and how did you move past that stage? <laughs> okay, I would say yes. First um, of all, let's talk about what buyer's remorse means uh, for those who. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, buyer's remorse basically uh, means, you know, say for example, you. You, you know, you've always admired to buy a fancy car and you eventually got the fancy car. And after a while, you're asking yourself if you made the right choice, you know, about the car you bought. So that is um, buyer's remorse. So, Ebo, yeah. Um, yes, I have. Um, and I think it was, it's, it's usually something that stems from, you know, there's an issue going on or we're trying to decide on something. And, you know, the way he's thinking about it, I'm like, who does that? Like, why would, you know, why would we do this? Or, um, um, recently I was, you know, I was trying to go for my postgraduate studies. Right. And I had certain schools in mind and to do, to go to those schools, I had to be there physically. And, you know, he was like, no, you can't go. I mean, not like you cannot go, but how does this work for us as a family? Right. There's a child. Are you going to go with the child? Are you going to leave? Like, what are we going to do? Right. Um, and at that point, you know, there was that sort of, if I had not married you when I married you, maybe I would have done my, my, you know, because <laughs> yeah, nobody would be, you know, this situation, right? So that sort of thing, right? Um, but like, um, and without sounding too spiritual, right? It's understanding that um, it's not about my feeling. It's not like I am on assignments, basically, right? Um, this person will not always... Um, be who I want them to be, quote and unquote. They they will sometimes and sometimes he um that them not aligning with what you want is actually for the best. By the time you you take a deep breath and think about it, they are not they don't hate you. It's not from a place of um lack of love. It's from a place of love the way they understand it in that situation, right? So um definitely there has been times like that. Um um, and when I say times, it's not as if like it's every every one month I <laughs> I regret my purchase. So I'm just saying like we've had you know maybe one or two um, instances where I just felt like oh my god. But you see something, and I, I must say this: I when I uh, like I said we dated, then we broke up and got back together. Mm. And at the point where we got back together, I knew I wanted to marry this person. Like, and that's what, that was the point. We didn't just get back together because we felt like dream part two. It was like, we are going to get married at this point, right? And I had, I knew that there was nobody else out there for me, right? So I was, I was sold on the package. It, it, and it wasn't even about, you know, that the guy was okay like that at the point. But like, I just knew there was such a, peace and not the peace like you know people say peace but I just knew that you know there there would definitely be shinier packages there would definitely be more affluent persons there would definitely be more you know maybe taller darker more handsome whatever but this person is my person right so um the buyer's remorse doesn't last because it's like (laughs) <laughs> don't sleep <laughs> wake up like this is the person that you're going to, that you there's no other person there so even if you go back to the streets right you are going there at your own peril 
So that's really, um, you know, from that place. And I, I'm being deliberate now about not being spiritual about it because there's also yeah, the spirit yeah. part of we have made a commitment to God. And so, you know, whether I like it or not, or whether I like you at this moment or not, um, you know, we are married. You're my husband and I honor you in that sense. So yeah. definitely, yes, but it's about um, really telling yourself some hard truths and you know knowing why you are here essentially mm. i mean really uh it's just uh, there are two things i picked up from you know what you said the fact that you know the journey of the journey of marriage is an intentional one uh i mean and it's also important that you even when even when you have moments like um you know, like ones that want to make you doubt if you made the right choice or you probably should have delayed marrying this person and all of that it's just momentary it's not something you should dwell on you know it comes and then it goes right uh, uh yeah i mean interesting i'm going to just ask uh, emmanuel i know emmanuel said uh, you know initially said his reality um i know is has gone far beyond what his expectation was for marriage but emmanuel i'm just going to ask um i mean did it, uh, at any point in time did it did you have um you know this sort of bias remorse Okay, so um, the direct answer is yes, that's happened a couple of times. And in answer to that question, I'm going to give a very um, short story that happened a few days ago when I got a pair of sneakers, right? Um, so I paid for a pair of sneakers, it was delivered to me. When I got it, I was like, oh, this was not exactly the way I saw it online. And I felt, immediately felt like, um, it was not my size because I thought I'd paid too much for this. But after I put it on, you know, moved around to it, I felt, okay, man, this thing is actually perfect for you. So in almost all the times I'd had bias remorse with respect to my choice um, in marriage, I think that now in hindsight, I think it's just because of my personal or, yes, subjective expectations. Mm. Not because this person is not the best for me, right? Uh, and so, after a moment, you see, man, if um, if I had married somebody else, yes, I know I would have lived peacefully with some other persons, but she's the best for me, right? So, it has happened a number of times. Um, I like uh, we mentioned earlier, in growing up, I might have expected to marry a taller person or a fairer person, and you ended up marrying who you married, right? So, those flashes may still come once in a while, but um, I've learned to look at the full package. I've learned to look beyond the aesthetics to the value. And so mm. when those flashes come, um, I don't let it pitch. So the direct answer is yes, that's happened a number of times, but I've moved my measurements from those things to something I think um, are more valuable to me. Wow, yeah. wow. These are deep I'm stuff. Just, sorry, okay. one more thing. I mean, just because, like you said, a lot of people will be watching it um, afterwards. It's important to know that, you know, there, there's, there's most likely going to be one thing about your spouse that, you know, isn't your favorite thing about them, right? But there would also be like a hundred other things that are absolutely wonderful about this person. So in case somebody is watching and thinks, oh, this thing about my spouse is actually completely, I really regret marrying this person because of this, you know, Focus on those other amazing things about this person because believe me, believe it or not, once you focus on those things, that other thing, it, it slowly starts to, you know, to shrink because you are seeing this person in such, you know, in you are looking at the best in your partner. So it, it, and that's part of being intentional. It's not just intentional about loving them, but it's intentional about seeing the best in them, even when they are not at their best. So that's what you. Thank you. Thank you. into my script. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. The spirit is one. Okay. So for I mean for Christian, um, you know, couple um, couples work, watching this, maybe you just got married. I mean, it's okay to experience bias remorse, but then I mean, just as Manuel said, it's not a place you want to dwell on. It's not a place you want to, you know, just. Um, stay on, you know, and as Ebo also mentioned, you know, rather than focus on those things that want to make people wish on if you made the right choice. 
rather focus on the values you know that your partner represents as Manu pointed out there i mean really and you're very right it's just certain things i just want to make you feel like mm, i'm not sure i mean i'm not sure about this choice and all that and it's, it's want to make you forget the amazing things about you know your partner and after that moment maybe momentary uh moments of discomfort and all of that you just you know you're just in awe of the person you you are married to yeah you, you know you are full of praise to god and full of thanks that oh god you actually gave me this amazing person so there's just that momentary discomfort that wants to make you second guess your decision but it's not uh it doesn't mean it doesn't make you a sinner <laughs> you know <laughs> I mean, even Jesus, even Jesus asks, you know, if the cup can, if this cup can pass over me, let it, <laughs> let it pass. So, I mean, he knew what he was coming to do, right? And at a, a moment, he yeah, wished yeah. for something else. And but he was, he quickly, you know, realized what he was yeah, doing. Yes. Assignment. So it's it's exactly the same thing. It's not yeah. you are not um, you are not unusual. You are not unique, you know. Yeah. And don't feel horrible, but just snap out of it really wow thanks a lot in case you just stumbled on this episode i um, mean on this podcast we'll be talking about navigating the first few years of marriage and i've been speaking with um emmanuel and um, Ebo, um two amazing um guests on the show today thank you so much for pouring your heart out so we'll be bringing this to a wrap um, in any moment from now but before we do that i just want to um also ask you guys you know uh you know there's somebody who is listening to this conversation and you know he's probably is about to get married and he or she just want to know um you know from you both what has been the most uh, challenging um experience in your marriage and how um how were you able to overcome it i mean something that could have probably you know um maybe you know that could have affected your marriage negatively or even destroyed the marriage but you know with god's grace and wisdom and you know what have you you're able to um overcome that particular thing you know i mean if you if you can be generous enough to share you know on anything if you don't mind uh who wants to go first Manu, Hebun. so ladies first okay <laughs> that one i knew you were going to say okay I think, what's the one thing it was honestly having our daughter um okay. it 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 really 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 shook us um, for many reasons, right? Um, we 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 assumed our roles as parents in very different forms, um, and I also had a, a quite a, an extended period of sort of solo parenting in the beginning, right? When I when I first when we first when I first had when we first had her, I was alone with her for a period, so I sort of had a, a working system, right? So by the time we we, we were re- reunited. There wasn't such such a place for him per se because it was working effectively without him, right? So it was a bit of a struggle for us to then make it work, and there was just so much around it. There was so much around, you know, the getting used to parenting together and all of those things. Um, it was quite, it was really tough. I know that there was a day I particular, I said I mentioned the D word. And my husband calls that like calls the counselor because then we were on um the marriage program that we had at Elevation, can't remember now, um, Lover's Club, okay. right? Um, and he was like, please, we need to come and see you. I don't know what this woman is saying and things like that. And it, was, it wasn't it was easy, right? But like I said, it was remembering. And uh, when I said the deal, what I did not say I wanted to divorce, so I don't know why he had heart attack. I just said, you know, this is something that can you know, cause lead to that. That was how the conversation went. But it was important that we had that conversation, right? And um, we sought help in speaking to somebody and in, you know, sitting down and thinking to ourselves, like, there's no, there's no, um, there's no, there's no leaving this. We're here together. We didn't make a mistake in coming together. There's a purpose for this union. And this child in this union is also for a purpose within this marriage, right? So we have to work together. I need to help you get past your hurt. You need to help me get past my hurt. And that was really us working together. And it wasn't a journey of we spoke to that person and, and that happened. But it was it was a necessary step. And, you know, gradually we healed to a point where, you know, we have the conversation and it's not, um, you know, nobody is feeling uneasy or whatnot, but it definitely was something that um, shook me. 
um, and shook us, you know, first time parenting. And I think also, um, and an offshoot of marriage being parenting, there's a lot that people don't talk about around parenting, right? I After having my daughter, I'm talking to some of my friends and I'm very deliberate about talking to any of my friends or anyone I know that is pregnant because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not spelling doom. But I feel like there's some there's some truths that you know people just get so mesmerized about the idea and we don't talk about. And I discover that most of these things, people dealt with it mm. in their own way, right? But you know, different reactions to it. So I think also sharing was very useful to us. Um, talking to somebody, praying about it, and also being grounded and knowing that you know we're here to the very end. <laughs> yeah. So that was wow. something. Wow, thank you so much, Ebon, for sharing. Mano, do you have something to share with us? Yes, so I, I had two experiences. And, um, you know, the thing about marriage is that before you got married, maybe you've been one team lead or one leader somewhere, or you've managed some people. So you feel like um, you have good experience with managing people with interpersonal relationships. But the truth is, marriage sometimes will humble you. Um, yeah. And one thing that is missing with young couples getting married is that a lot of times they are not coming in with a mindset to learn. So learning is not just reading books and attending marriage and the likes. Now I'm saying this because when I got married, um, for the first few months, expectations were she should get pregnant, um, you should begin to see the fruit of marriage, you know, expectations from people around you at all. So first few months, um, Nothing yet. You did the test, nothing yet. You see colleagues who got married around the same time, and you're like, hope I'm fine. And we're particularly under pressure for some reasons. Right. So um, that in itself, until of course, God did it barely six months after we got married. I mean, imagine how naive we were. And I I, I used to joke with my wife now that if we had known, we would have waited a bit more, so we would have had um, <laughs> a private time together. Right? Yes. So uh, that in itself was one thing that shook us, but was really unnecessary. So I'll say this to young people out there that um, when you come into marriage, particularly the guys, don't think you've known so much. You are a 30-year-old guy, 35-year-old guy, 25-year-old guy. Um, you've gone through school. You've had you had a business. So you think, I mean, you can scale through marriage just easily. Come with an attitude to learn. The second thing was in the early stage of my marriage, um, and up till now, I'm still very much involved in a lot of projects, writing, publishing books, etc. etc. So my finances was going into a lot of this, right? And so um, it was tough for me at the time. Thankfully, God has helped us. We've grown, I've changed jobs, I, um, God has blessed us um, well. So, but then it was not too easy. And from the little she had, she still supported right so um it was really tough i mean i'm just saying this looking very light but it was tough because we ran into um financial needs and she was there to help so um again going back to the point around um being open in marriage there will be times where you would face tough times dark times but you remember that this is just a face and you are going to be in it um, forever so yeah wow one other thing is this okay. yes and i must ensure to say this you know um for christians who are coming into marriage and maybe non-christians who are celibate you may think oh i've done i understand how marriage is i know how to um manage a woman meet her expectations it is hmm. okay so that's another <laughs> school on its own right i know this is not a conversation for that right but um, it still wraps into the thoughts yeah, around yeah. coming to learn. Not coming like a superman. If coming to, coming like a superman, you fall flat. <laughs> okay. I mean, thanks a lot, Emmanuel. Mm. Okay. Uh, I, I just have one um, or two questions just to wrap this up. Please, uh, if you can keep, if you can just um, just go straight to the point so that I don't um, keep you um, um, both longer on the on on on, on the show. Uh, okay. So. Um, um, Ebon, now talk to the ladies, all right? What is one thing you you know that if a lady probably who is probably yet to get married or is already married can do 
and it will um, probably crash a marriage or it will make it more difficult for her in marriage. What is that one thing you would advise any lady to be watchful of or careful about? That's in when she gets married, to be careful about. Yeah, yeah in marriage, yeah. Um, I think it's, I think the Bible already tells us respect. And, um, and the simple thing is, you know, there's this notion of respect is earned. Um, don't expect your husband to earn your respect at every, like at every point in your marriage. Sometimes you will give her that respect as a service. He's a man at the end of the day. He's a human being. He's, he will fall short of your expectations. You will, you will be ahead of him on certain conversations in certain, you know, dispositions, but he has earned that respect as the head of your house. He doesn't need to do anything more to earn it. So just give it free. That's, I think that's the one thing I would definitely say to um, any young person get. Thank you so much. I'll see you come back to you just to give your final words on the conversation today. Um, Imano, what is that one thing you think every guy um, needs to take note of? They're going to have a successful marriage or if they don't take note of that thing, it's going to destroy their marriage. So the one thing for me would be don't be selfish. And that is a whole lot to um, summarize in one word, but don't be selfish. Think of yourself, but think of your partner also. For every decision you take, don't be selfish, right? Um, every of the moves you make may have far-reaching consequences. And if you think of yourself only, if you think of your growth only, if you think of your satisfaction only, if you think of yourself only, you are very likely to fail in marriage. So um, have it at the back of your mind that you are in this thing together and you should not be selfish. Wow. Hmm. Respect and... Uh, okay, lack of respect and selfishness can destroy your home. Have respect for your partner as a lady. Um, ensure that you are not a selfish um, partner as a guy. Uh, okay, so Ebon, your last, um, your final words on this conversation today, navigating the first three years of marriage. Yeah. Um, my my final words would be, um, you know, be very careful before coming into marriage. Get all the, um, you know, get counseling and not just counseling. Um, that your church organizes, right? Because different churches are invested in marriage counseling at different um, capacities. But if you can afford it, get a marriage counselor, a professional marriage counselor who, um, as a Christian, should be a Christian as well, but, you know, not under the church, but a marriage counselor. Speak to other married couples. Speak to your parents to be honest with you about marriage, right? Have a, you can't know it all, but have a good understanding and, you know, you can end a, an, a, you can end a bad engagement the day of the wedding. Don't like, don't like, don't you know? There's no, it's not ever too late <laughs> to break off an engagement. Essentially, right? Don't go into marriage for the sake of getting married and then you know having a bad marriage. Do all that you can to to, to inform yourself ahead, and you know, don't feel pressure to marry anybody under any circumstance. I think that's really is the advice. Well, thank you so much. Yes, you're going to pray for the ladies. Um, Mano, yeah. So my final words would be be intentional. Um, there's a reason why God is very much interested in homes, and there's a reason why the devil is very interested in homes also. And that's because the home is the basis for the society, for government, for businesses, it is right. Um the devil is very intentional about the homes, and that is why he puts out content out there, you know, normalizing or making things look like it's normal to divorce, it's normal to have a broken home, get into the office space, and people are like, um, it's normal to have a side chick. And these things look very normal. If you watch five comedy skits right now, three out of these five comedy skits will be around infidelity, promiscuity, a guy cheats on his own, a lady is hiding her phones from her husband. Um, you know, things around normalizing that marriage does not work. So I would say as a young guy, or as a young lady, as a young couple or intended couple, very intentional about the fact that marriage still works and your own marriage will work. Amen. Thank you so much, Manu. Uh, I mean, this has been an insightful, um, you know, 
moment with you both on the show today. Um, Ebon, I'm going to ask you to just say a short prayer to um, the ladies. You're intending, um, you know, ladies who are, I mean, t- uh, ladies who are intending to get married or who are already married. Um, just say a short prayer. Maybe the people, maybe someone listening to this conversation who is probably experiencing it's tough in the marriage. I mean, just say what a blessing to them as well. Emmanuel, you're also going to please do um, likewise after Ebon. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to, um, you know, gather today and, you know, discuss about marriages and, you know, um, the early years of marriages. We thank you, Father Lord, for how your presence has been with us and you have, you know, influenced our conversation. We speak over um, everyone, every lady who is seeking a life partner. I ask, O oh Lord, that Lord, you will other her steps to her partner. You would um, open her eyes to see and to understand who she is as a person and who she is in you. I pray, O oh Lord, also for marriages that might be, um, you know, f- going through any storm in this season lord we ask that lord your peace will still every storm in jesus name we pray that there is Amen. love in abundance in our marriage in our homes and in our marriages there is peace and there is joy and we fulfill our destiny in the name of jesus amen, amen. amen. thank you Abel. um Manu. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this um, show. We thank you for the opportunity to learn together and to share our experiences with others. Thank you for the gift of marriage. Thank you because we found it wise to bring a man and a woman together for partnership. Lord, we ask that the purpose why you've created this institution will be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for all those who are coming into this um, journey as couples, we pray you make theirs fruitful, to make it full of bliss. For those of us who are married already, we ask for wisdom, for tolerance, for the resources to keep going. We ask ultimately that we we'll fulfill your plans in our lives and your plans in this generation. Mm-hmm. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you empower us, young people, to understand that the home is the strongest weapon that the body of Christ has. Lord, we take authority over every propaganda, every agenda to weaken the homes through um, several initiatives. We pray, Lord, that the truth will be established in Jesus' name. We pray for all those who are expecting something in their homes, um, perhaps children, breakthrough, or those praying to God for a life partner. We pray, Lord, that you provide for them. Glory be to your name in the highest. Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Ebu and Emmanuel. Um, that is all we have for you on the show today. Um, if you have been blessed by this particular episode, please um, do me a favor. Hit the share button. Let someone else get blessed just as you have been blessed. You can as well recommend this episode to someone who has just gotten married or who is about to get married. Let it also bless them. And if you are married already and you're listening to this episode, please do listen again so you can refresh your home and refresh yourself. It's been amazing uh, on the show today. And I just, want, I just want to take a moment to appreciate those who have just um, stumbled on this podcast um, for the first time. Welcome to the Faith Culture Podcast. I really appreciate you um, for staying all this while to listen to this particular episode. And for those who have been listening for a while, I want to say thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, I see all the likes, the shares, and the comments. Please, let's keep at it and let's keep um, you know, spreading um, possibilities um, you know, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, that is all we have for you today. As I said earlier, I'll be coming your way um, you know, next week with another episode. And I just want to um, ask if you have any questions for me or for any of the guests, you can send them to faithculture01 at gmail.com, faithculture01 at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to um, help you share to them. Or if it's for me, I'll be more than happy to read um, from you. Thank you so much. Uh, mm-hmm. like, come away next time. Stay blessed. Thank you, Ebu. Thank you, um, Imano. Yeah. God bless you. God bless your home. Thank God you for having us. Yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs>